This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone. And welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Did you know that there is a military alliance between Russia, Belarus, Armenia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan, and that it is based on that alliance that Kazakhstan asked Putin, and Putin readily complied, to send Russian troops into Kazakhstan to fight thousands upon thousands of demonstrators standing up to the totalitarian regime. All these countries I mentioned belonged to the former Soviet Union. Now, Deutsche Welle told us on January 7 that Kazakhstan is the largest and richest former Soviet Republic in Central Asia, which also has the closest ties with Moscow. A third of Russians repeatedly rated Kazakhstan as the second most friendly country after Belarus. Now, in 2014, it was overtaken by China and has now since ranked third, which means first comes Belarus, second China, third Kazakhstan as the most friendly countries to Russia. The article goes on to say that there has been speculation in both countries for years about whether Russia might annex these territories in a manner similar to Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula. Now, there is renewed discussion about Russia's actions in Kazakhstan. There is a widespread view that Putin could seize on the development and the deployment of troops as an opportunity to expand Russian presence in Kazakhstan, because as of now, Russia does not have any military bases in that country. The Guardian wrote on January 7 that with the deployment of troops to Kazakhstan on Thursday, some heard eerie echoes of the so-called Prague Spring of 1968 and the Soviet crushing of the Hungarian Revolution in 1956. I still remember very vividly the Prague Spring and how the Russians stepped in and overthrew Czechoslovakia in 1968 and arrested their leader Ducek, and we haven't really heard much of him anymore since then. Deutsche Welle wrote on January 10, Putin has said that the Moscow-led military alliance would only remain in Kazakhstan for a limited time. He also said the bloc's intervention was a signal that it would not allow any governments in the region to be undermined or overthrown. Now, there's no question that it is Putin's declared goal to resurrect the power and influence of the former Soviet Union. And ultimately, Russia will be successful with this endeavor, and much more will happen. You see, the Bible speaks of the end-time kings of the East, the collaboration of Far Eastern countries including Russia and Russian-controlled satellite states, also including Ukraine, Belarus, Kazakhstan, other countries, which were formerly a part of the Soviet Union, as well as China, Japan, India, Korea, and perhaps the Philippines, not to forget Iran. All these nations will be united in their fight against continental Europe, and they will also invade other nations. Now, a reference to the mighty army of these Far Eastern nations can be found in Revelation 9 and verse 16, where we read about a huge number of horsemen. I'd like to read to you from our free booklet, How Can We Know That Christ's Return Is Near? And we say the following. We should note that Revelation 9.16 literally says, 
and the number of armies of the cavalry two myriads of myriads. The word for horsemen or cavalry is hippicon, which is derived from hippos, meaning horse. The New Bible Commentary Revised explains, The horsemen seem to be of little account. It is the horses that terrify and destroy. Some claim, we continue to say, the reference of the huge number is strictly symbolic. Others state that the army describes a force of 200 million demons. But since the emphasis is on the horses or tanks and other deadly weaponry, the thought should be considered that the tanks are not directed by human beings, but by robots. Especially Far Eastern nations are already heavily engaged in creating and cloning artificial intelligence machines. I also found the comment by the Living Bible quite interesting. They said, if this is a literal figure, it is no longer incredible. In view of a world population of 6 billion in the near future, now this was written in the early 60s, in 2022 it will actually be close to 8 billion people. And the article went on to say, in China alone in 1961, there were an estimated 200 million armed and organized militiamen. Now by now that number is also higher for sure. Still, could the reference of two myriads of myriads of quote-unquote horsemen be to a human army together with a demonic army? Now let's consider the tremendous influence which Satan and his demons have over the affairs of men. Satan is the ruler of this earth. He has a throne here on earth. He has power over all nations and kingdoms. God's kingdom is not of this world. It is of a future world. We are told to come out of this present evil world and be separate. Satan gives his power, his throne, and great authority to the beast. A reference here to the ancient Roman Empire and its ten revivals, the last revival of which is happening in Europe as we speak. It's also a reference, of course, to the leaders of these revivals and the final last leader, also called the beast in the Bible. Now this last beast, this military leader, will be of German or Austrian descent. And we also are told that Satan, who is the angel of the bottomless pit and of destruction, inspires the beast to go to war. Then we hear about the man of sin, another term for the false prophet, who is going to be sitting in the temple of God, claiming to be God. He is talking about the fact that he is going to be sitting in a revived third temple in Jerusalem prior to Christ's return. We are being told that he will be coming according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Demons will go out of Satan's mouth and of the mouth of the beast and of the mouth of the false prophet to gather the kings of the earth, including, of course, the kings of the east, such as Russia, to the place called Armageddon, and to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Demons are called the powerful rulers of the darkness of this age. They are ruling the empires of this present evil world under Satan. The angel Gabriel revealed to Daniel that a powerful demon ruled ancient Persia, today of course known as Iran, and 
also another powerful demon ruling ancient Greece. Now Gabriel called them the prince of Persia and the prince of Greece. So demons are the real rulers over the kingdoms of this world, including the kings of the east. Demons are the ones who are leading them to war, and millions of people will die. Satan and his demons will have a huge part to play in coming events. And we read that Satan, the devil, has great wrath, because he knows that he has only a short time left. We are asked to pray to God the Father for his kingdom and his rule to come to this earth when he will crush Satan under our feet shortly. And with it, all the kingdoms of this world, including Russia, will be destroyed. God's kingdom will break them into pieces, crush them, put an end to them, to all the worldly kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. In the meantime, we must continue to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom of God and to declare to the world the warning of what lies ahead. We must be standing watch and see and pronounce what God is showing us. You have heard part of that warning message today. Thank you very much for listening. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.